bags. As we already know, whenever there's a merchandising company that is being operated, they will always have the buying side and a selling side of inventory. The company purchases the inventory from a manufacturer or supplier, and then they sell it to the end consumers. In between this process, there are two key points that we always must consider. Transportation costs and title of ownership. So let's identify those two. In terms of transportation costs, we have two particular points that need to be addressed. Freight in and freight out. Freight in is simply any type of shipping charges that the company pays to get the goods to them. Think about the keywords in the title, freight in. So how does that affect the books? Well, freight in is always included in the cost of inventory. Therefore, anytime the company assumes freight in, they must increase inventory. On the books, that simply means to debit inventory. What about freight out? Freight out is simply any type of shipping charges that the company has to pay to ship the goods out of the company to the customer. So if the company ever assumes any freight out, that's simply an expense, a delivery expense perhaps. Now my spider senses are already tingling. My spidey sense is tingling. And I know that a couple of you savvy bag chasers are at home thinking, well, what would happen if we acquire some freight in, and since it's included in inventory, pay within the discount terms on an account that we have. If by any chance you have assumed some freight in, which ultimately increased the cost of your inventory, and you make a payment on an account within a discount term, the portion of the freight in must not be included in the discount. Any type of freight in that you pay, even though it is debited to inventory, will not receive a discount for paying on the account. What about title of ownership? Title of ownership simply means that anytime the goods are in transit, meaning that they have been shipped from either the buyer to the seller, who owns the goods? So we have two legal terms that supports whoever owns the goods as they're being shipped. Thus, we have free on board shipping point and free on board destination. Free on board shipping point simply means that title of ownership automatically passes once the goods have reached the shipping point. Now, what do we mean when we refer to the shipping point? We mean the third party that actually ships the goods. For example, UPS will be considered a shipping point. DHL will be considered a shipping point. The United States Post Office, all of these are shipping points. So what that simply means is once the seller brings the goods to the shipping point, the buyer now owns the goods, which means their inventory must be increased. It also means that the buyer is responsible for the goods while it's in transit. Therefore, if anything happens or gets damaged to the goods, it's the buyer's responsibility to account for it. In contrast, free on board destination simply means that the buyer receives title of ownership of the goods the minute it reaches the place of destination, the shipping address. Now, gang, we order off of Amazon and online from several different businesses, and we already know that while the goods are in transit, if something happens to the goods before we receive them, we can simply make a call and the businesses will correct that. This is a clear example of free on board destination. We do not have responsibility or ownership of the goods while they're being shipped. So let's take a look at an example of how to address transportation costs and title of ownership. Okay, gang, so we have a following transaction that deals with shipping charges and we need to know how to properly record them. So let's rock and roll. On October 1st, it says, suppose that It's a Joke paid $300 shipping charge for the purchase of inventory. What are the key words? 
paid shipping charge for inventory. So, who paid the shipping charge? We did. We being, it's a joke. Since we paid the charges to get the goods to us from the purchase of inventory, we are considering this shipping charge to be freight in. And we know the rule. Anytime freight in occurs, it has to be included in the cost of inventory. So how will we journalize this transaction? Obviously, we're going to debit inventory for the $300 and credit cash. Keyword paid. Anytime you see the word paid in a company page, you always credit cash. Let's move on. On the 7th, It's a Joke paid $1,000 shipping charge for delivery of inventory to a client. So what are the key words? Pay shipping charge to a client. Delivery of inventory. So we actually paid the charges to ship the goods to a client. Basically shipping the goods out. And since we did that, this is considered a freight out charge. And we know that freight out charges are not included in inventory. They're recorded as an expense. And so let's just call it a delivery expense. So we're going to increase delivery expense with a debit for $1,000 and credit cash for $1,000. Easy breezy game. Okay, now we're going to look at an example that deals with shipping terms and when the title or ownership is properly passed. On December 30th, It's a Joke purchases $20,000 worth of inventory turns 215 net end of the month, free aboard shipping point. Goods were shipped by the seller immediately. Will this purchase affect It's a Joke's inventory balance on the year end balance sheet? So, a lot going on here, gang. But basically, it's December 30th, and the following day, the 31st, we're going to make our financial statements for the entire year. And so, the question arises as, when we generate this balance sheet, will the previous transaction on the 30th affect inventory's amount? And so we will know that based on the shipping terms that was offered. So what key words are we dealing with? Free aboard shipping point and goods were shipped by seller immediately. And so we're talking about immediately as of December 30th. And so what does free aboard shipping point tell us? It tells us that buyer receives title of ownership. Buyer owns the inventory the minute it reaches the shipping point. And since the goods were shipped immediately on the 30th, that means that we, it's a joke, have title or ownership of the goods. Therefore, on the balance sheet, these particular inventory, the $20,000 worth of inventory, must be reported. So that basically means on the 30th, we need to debit inventory and credit cash if it was for cash on account the description didn't say so but we must record the inventory before the year end because it is ours technically so to answer the question big yes december 30th it's a joke purchase twenty thousand dollars worth of inventory terms 215 end of the month for your board destination goods were received on january 10th the following year Will this purchase affect It's a Joke's inventory balance on the year-end balance sheet? So, what's the dilemma, gang? Basically, tomorrow we're going to make our financial statements for the entire year, year year-end. And we're trying to figure out whether or not this inventory that happened on the 30th needs to be reported on the balance sheet. And so the shipping terms are going to dictate that. So the key words in this description will be free aboard destination... And goods were received on January 10th the following year. So, based on free aboard destination, it states that the buyer will receive title or ownership of the goods the minute that it reaches the destination, the shipping address. And since in this description, we received the goods on January 10th the following year, We do not have ownership of the goods while it's being shipped. Therefore, for our balance sheet inventory amount, it will not include the $20,000 purchase on the 30th. 
So the correct answer for this is a big no. So there you have it, gang. Beautiful descriptions of shipping terms and transportation costs. Hopefully you understood everything that was in this video. And if so, don't forget to like, subscribe, or share the channel with your friends for more ways to chase the bags. Till then, see you soon. Bags!